Now we know that deadlock is a situation where two or more threads are unable to proceed because each is waiting for other thread to release a lock. I have given a coding challenge for you to solve for a specific deadlock. Let me just reiterate the problem statement here. We have two threads, thread 1 and thread 2 running in parallel. We also have two resources, resource 1 and resource 2. Thread 1 will first acquire lock on resource 1 and thread 2 on resource 2. Then they will do some processing. After that, thread 1 will need lock on resource 2 while keeping the lock on resource 1. Similarly, thread 2 will need lock on resource 1 while keeping the lock on resource 2. So in this situation, there is a very high probability that deadlock will occur because both the threads are running in parallel. So the challenge was to resolve this deadlock, but we need to consider few points. First, we cannot change the order of locking. That is, thread 1 will first lock resource 1 and then resource 2. Similarly, thread 2 will first lock resource 2 and then resource 1. Secondly, we cannot skip the code execution if the lock is not available. That means we need full code execution. Now let us try to think about few basic solutions here. First is to change the order of locks like thread 2 acquire the lock on resource 1 first and later on resource 2. But that will not satisfy our first requirement so this approach cannot be used. Another approach could be having a timeout while trying to acquire the lock. After that timeout, it will not try to get the lock and skip over. But with this, the second requirement will not be fulfilled where we need to make sure that the complete code is executed. So how we can resolve this deadlock situation? We will cover one approach in this video and if you have more approaches, you can share it either in comment section or you can share from your GitHub repo link as well. Now let us see the solution. This is the code on how to prevent deadlock using locking mechanisms. Let us break down the code step by step. Here we have two re-entrant objects, lock1 and lock2. These locks will be used to synchronize the access to shared resources. The main method initializes two threads, t1 and t2, by calling prepare thread1 and prepare thread2 methods. After that, both threads are started. Now let us see how thread1 will handle the resource locking and do the processing. The prepare thread1 function is responsible for returning thread object for t1. In this, thread1 tries to acquire the lock on resource1 or lock1 using try lock method. It will attempt to acquire the lock without blocking the thread. It will wait for one second before giving up. If the lock acquisition fails, it retries again. We can add a small delay if needed between the retries as well. Once a lock is acquired, the thread performs some processing with the locked resource. Then, thread tries to acquire the lock on other resource. If the second lock acquisition fails, it releases the first lock and retries. After successfully acquiring both locks, the thread performs processing with the second resource. Finally, it releases both the locks in the finally block to ensure that they are released even if there is any exception occurs. In the second thread method, the exact same logic is written by keeping the order of locks as required. That is, the second thread will first acquire lock on resource 2 and then on resource 1. So, using this approach of releasing the lock on resource 1 when lock on resource 2 is not available and trying to reacquire both the locks will help us in resolving the deadlock situation. Now let me execute this solution and then we will discuss the output. So here we can see uh, thread1 and thread2 both are running in parallel. So thread1 first tries to acquire the lock on resource1 and at the same time thread2 was trying to acquire the lock on resource2. So in that we can see thread2 was able to get the lock on resource2 and do some processing and thread1 was also able to get the lock on resource1 because there was no other thread which was locking the resource1 and resource2 so they were easily able to get the lock on those resources. So once that processing is done now comes the deadlock situation where thread2 will require lock on resource1 and thread1 will require lock on resource 2. So here you can see both of these threads are trying to acquire lock on the second resource. But as 
thread1 was not able to get the lock on resource2 because it was already locked by thread2. So what it does, it released the lock on resource1 for that time. And after that, it will retry to acquire the lock on resource2. But during the same time, the same happened with the thread2 as well. And thread2 also released the lock on resource2. And due to the fast contact switching itself, thread1 was able to get the lock on resource2. And immediately it will reacquire the lock on resource1 as well and starts the processing. And once the processing is done, during that time, thread2 was waiting for the lock on resource one and and as soon as the processing of thread one is completed it will start releasing the locks so here we can see first thread one release the lock on resource two then on resource one and at this point because thread two was still waiting and uh, checking it uh, continuously so it was able to get a lock on resource one and similar to the thread one it will also reacquire the lock on resource two and perform the execution so with this the deadlock situation was avoided. If I remove those lock conditions from there, definitely this code will be in deadlock that we have already seen in our previous video. So using that mechanism, when uh, the thread was not able to acquire the second lock itself, then releasing the first lock for some period and retrying to get the second lock will help. So you can see in this output here. So we are able to execute the complete code for uh, thread1 and thread2 both and also we have not changed the order of resource locking so with this code implementation we are able to achieve whatever was the requirement so as i mentioned earlier also this is one of the approach so if you have more optimal approaches that you know of you can share it with us in the comment section or also you can share it from your github repo links as well so this was the last video in this multi-threading series. Uh, I would like to thank each and every one of you for supporting me during this playlist creation. And from now, I will continue with my spring series where I will start covering the topics from spring framework. So again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, happy coding. Bye.